spring. So this will probably be the longest session that I'm going to be going on for that you've had so far. So um, let's get right down to it. Sorry, stairs are a bit of a hassle. So sorry for getting this started a bit later. Um, we are going to go ahead and um, I'm loading up a new project, but let's go ahead and go to our announcements where we say, hey, you've got your exam. I'll send out a remind. Huh. You know, I really should have announced the exam date like via an actual announcement, but oops. We, as long as you've been here in class, you've heard it multiple times. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with these ones. So I got these ones from uh, a Harvard practice exam or not necessarily these specific questions, but a um, but not necessarily these specific questions, but this type of question. And it's fairly straightforward. We're just trying to figure out which node. So if we start at D and follow the and follow the links, excuse me, annotate. So we start at D and follow the links. We're starting at D. So d.previous.previous.next.previous. That brings us to B. Similar C dot next dot previous dot previous that brings us back to b and because i love being able to grade things easily the next answer is also b uh, i am the kind of professor who will make mark all five of his true false questions in a row as true or all false just because that makes it easy for me to grade and because i love messing with you guys all right so also another way to cancel these out is to note that dot previouses and dot next, they cancel each other out so long as we never are going out of bounds, which we don't. So, right, dot next, dot next, dot pre, dot pre, dot next, dot pre, dot next, dot pre, right? These are straightforward, but these kind of questions are just to kind of get you warmed up for the next question, which is, write a sequence of commands that will move the tail of a doubly linked list. So, in a, in a doubly linked list, this is not too bad. We just simply say that the new tail is equal to, our new tail is equal to uh, the current tail dot previous, right? And so let's go, so I'll go ahead and do the next question simultaneously, right? Make sense? We'll do this simultaneously. So tail, so tail is equal to tail.previous. What this does is that this moves, makes this the tail. And so let's go ahead and we'll be thorough and get rid of all the pointers. We'll say tail.next.previous equal to null. This isn't really necessary, but I like to be thorough, which will remove that. And then we say tail.next is equal to null, which will remove this pointer. And then this node, this hanging node out there will be uh, garbage collected in Java or Python. I'm going to go quickly through these first problems because I want to focus most mainly on the coding problems. Okay. So write a sequence of commands that will add a new item to index zero in a doubly linked list. And again, we'll simply draw this at, at the same time. I normally do arrows. Which is a hint that if you want to know what you're doing, you should draw it. Okay, so write a sequence of commands that will add a new item to index zero. So we, we're gonna we're gonna just create, we're gonna assume our new node is called adding. Not even gonna bother making it. I'm just gonna assume that it already exists. Right? This is head. This is adding. Okay. Add a new node to index zero of a doubly linked list. So 
first thing we need to do is attach this in the node, which is saying, um, dot neck equal to head. Then head dot previous. That's going to be equal to adding. That's going to take this guy's previous and create that because that was previously null. All right. And now what we do is we say, uh, we say uh, store the memory location of adding the variable called head. So this node over here gets the label of head. And yes, I'm recording this, so don't don't worry. Yeah, I'm doing these all as doubly linked lists because why not? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new project. New project. Next, next practice. Exam one morning. This window. New Java class. Okay. Press six exam. All right. So, what we're going to do here is that if I have to make a new uh, link list at some point, I will, but don't worry about that. So this one's a fairly straightforward question. Suppose you have a, some list of integers. This is probably easy. This question is probably much easier than what would be expected on the exam. Find the minimum and maximum values stored in the list and return their sums, regardless of the implementation of the list. Although that gets us into our first uh, minor pitfall, I guess. Uh, I said copy, please. Now I said paste, please. Thank you. Turn their sum. So return min plus max. And now what we do over here is we import the list type. Okay. Don't really care what type it is, what type it is. So what we do over here is that we just simply make we can make either two loops or one loop. I'm just gonna make one loop. So for e val, sorry, for int value in list if if value is less than sorry if the value is less than the minimum value then that value becomes the minimum value it's fairly straightforward and then if value is greater than max, then that becomes technically it's possible for the first value to be both the biggest and the small, bigger than the smallest number and smallest than the biggest number. So that's why I do them as separate if statements. That one's straightforward. Um, so implementing it like this takes O of N no matter what. No matter what, what? Yes. Um, this is a general question, but on the exam, are we expected to try and find the, the best um, You're not expected to find the best runtime. You're be expected to analyze what your runtime is, okay. which is O of N for this. Now let's go ahead and switch this up. Same algorithm. Int value, or almost the same algorithm. Int value is equal to list.get i. For int i is equal to zero. i is less than uh, list.size. I plus plus. 
Now what's the runtime? Yeah. Anyone else? That says yes. Any other contenders? Okay. Yes. Any other contenders? It is both. It is, the answer is we have no clue at this point because we don't know what the list is. If it's an array list, this takes constant time. If it's a linked list, this operation takes all of n time. Because with the iterator, we just simply go through and use the iterator and it keeps track of where it is for us. So getting the next item is a constant time thing because it knows where it is and just travel uses the pointers to travel. Here though, in with an array list, it can depend. So the answer is for, for what is the runtime is, well, it depends on what kind of item you're you what kind of array list or linked list you're using. And you could, I mean, and of course. Using the for each notation kind of just bisects that, but what if you're trying to remove items through it? Uh, then that becomes tricky because of the get operations. But at the same time, like removing it, if the room all remove all instances, that will take O of n time, O of n squared time regardless because your get method takes O of n, your remove take item takes O of n in a linked list. So it really just depends. So always work with your assumptions or always write out what your assumptions are. Uh, I won't necessarily penalize you on the exam, but definitely if you want to try to earn some extra credit, then basically showing me that you understand that that, link that it matters for linked list versus uh, array lists, then that would be a way to do it. Um, so next question. So suppose you have some list of strings, write a method called reverse word that creates all, a list with all the strings reversed. And the input here was so that you understand that I'm not asking for hello world nice doesn't become nice world hello. I mean, it becomes ole drwal and ekten, okay? So we're, we're literally taking everything and we are reversing it. Now in this case, because we are modifying the list, we do need to use the get and set methods, right? So there's there's just no way around it. If we don't use the get and set method, essentially we, well, with strings, any changes to a string is just modifying a copy. Um, and then if you're modifying a variable, you're just changing one variable to memory location to another variable in memory location, which doesn't change the stored memory location in the list. So we have to use the get set method. So um, for, and oh, except, uh, no, that's sorry, I misread it. We're returning a new list, so we don't actually have to change anything. Okay. So, yay. Okay. Which means that we can again use our for each loop. So, for string word in list. So, if you were, if you had to change the actual list in that case, then you would need to use the get set method. But here we can just use use the enhanced for loop, which is awesome. So, uh, okay, and now we'll do a list of string output is equal to a new, and here I can do a array list or a linked list because adding to the end of either is constant time. Okay. And now what we have to do is that we have to reverse the string. Now there's a couple ways to go through and reverse the string. The easiest is actually, um, if we are in Python, we would just be able to use a you know, word colon colon negative one to reverse it, to do slice notation because I love Python, but this is in Python. So um, we need string reversed. So yeah, if it was Python, we could totally do slice notation, but we can't. So. Um, one thing we can do is we can say uh, new. So this is the most efficient solution, by the way, um, or which is to use the string builder class, uh, pass it the word, and then call the dot reverse method in, within the string builder. Um, and then 
call the two string method to convert the string to to get the string out of the string converter uh, the string build builder um which is nice the string builder is what that's used for is that i think it's been uh it's been it's being deprecated because there's a new more efficient class that does it but basically concatenating strings is expensive so what the string builder does is that it keeps a list of all the stuff and then concatenates it all at once for you essentially allows you to build it and do other kind of string manipulation kind of exercises if we aren't able to do that or you don't know or you don't or or this is news to you then we have to do it the uh the manual way which is empty create an empty string for every character in reverse we're gonna we're so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna again use the for each loop because that's shorter so for car c in word but we're uh, strings aren't iterable, unfortunately. So to get around this, what I do is I do two character array. And this is just me avoiding using the index, right? You know, avoid using the get car at or the car at method. So now with reversed though, I can't just say reverse plus equals C because that would be the same, right? That would, so what I do, right? That's the same as saying reverse plus C. Um, so what I do for that is I just simply say reverse it. I do C plus reversed. So add it to the front. Keep adding it to the front. So right, it becomes H and then E H and then L E H and then L L E H and then O L L E H. Keeps adding the letters to the front. Um, this is technically an again an O of n method because we are touching each character once. We're working with each string once. We can assume the strings are all of the same average size. Again, it becomes a bit trickier if we're if we're using index ind indices. I'm going to skip delete a uh, list right now, but essentially there's a couple different ways to do it, which is you got to make sure you iterate through and just remove all the pointers. Uh, setting head to tail. Head and tail equal to null might may or may not work depending, but and the size equal. The other thing, the other key is that if you're removing everything from a linked list, you got to set the size equal to zero. It was a trickier problem than I intended when I wrote it for points, but I want to move on to these th problems, which are much more like the problems you'd find on the exam. And I want to make sure that they get the full attention they deserve rather than the speed I've been going through, because now I'll slow down and I'll start actually hitting these. Okay. So this one is an instance method. In other words, I want you to deal with, uh, basically if you're dealing with a specific item and saying add this item to a linked list or do these things items to a linked list, I'm generally, if it's an instance method, I want you to be able to access the head, tail, and the node class, all right? On methods where, I, and I'll be explicit where you cannot access the nodes, right? But you, I think on the exam, you have a bit of one and a bit of the other. So where I tell you for which problems you can access and which problems you can't. Um, or they might all just be node problems, but that's fine. So write an instance method called count, iterate over a linked list and returns a number of times item occurs. So let's go ahead and I'm not gonna bother cloning the linked list to class um, because I mean, um, Cancel. I could create the linked list class, but I don't necessarily know how it works, like internally and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just going to make a new. I'm just going to make a new class. I'm going to call it exam LL frame. You don't have to do that. It's just me being dumb. But the main thing, if I'm working with a linked list, then I need a, then I need a node class. That's essentially what I need. And I need, so I need, um, let's see. I need a no, I need a private class, private static class, meaning that it's not dependent on the linked list to exist. That's what the static means there. Meaning that nodes can exist without having to be attached to any specific linked list. Make sense? Also, this is annoying. Um, e, why are you trying to close me out there? Oh, because I've got this double thing here. That's weird. Okay. And return zero to quelch that. Because always, 
want to make sure you're coding without error. So, right. And again, I'm not just, I, I could copy paste this or use the link or use the linked list class I build. You probably just don't want to call it linked list. You want to call it like my linked list or something like that. Um, private. So let's go with um, right, E item, node E next. And then, uh, yeah, that's all I need for right now. No, if I need to do a doubly linked list, I will. Um, public. Node. Now we just need the constructor. E item, which takes in an item. Uh, this item is equal to item. Some some resources like to put their like take in a item and the next thing you're going to connect to. I don't like to do that because I like to keep all my all the places where I might be mistake uh, might have mistakes localized to one place. So I just make nodes as simply boxes to hold stuff. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and um, now that I have this, I can do node e, and I love that Java is smart enough that I can declare an instance of this class before the class is actually defined, which is a wonderful feature that Java has. That's Java being awesome. Node e hit, node e head, node e tail, um, and size is equal to. And yeah, we just need an int size, which should be sufficient for us for our purposes over here. So count. Um, so starting from head. All right, so from starting from head, what we're gonna do is we are gonna do E. Okay, so we're gonna say node E current is equal to the head. So this, we're going to start from this node. And we need a while loop. So let's go with, for this one, we're going to do while current. You either want while current is not equal to null or while current.next is not equal to null. It really depends on whether or not you're going to be checking, you're checking just what's inside this guy or you're checking what's inside this guy and the next guy. So while current is not equal to null because we're going to be checking each of these individually. And this is just the way you iterate through a linked list using pointers. Current is equal to current dot next, right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, basically ask ourselves, um, let's go with an int occurrence. Int occurrences. This one's fairly straightforward, other than the fact, other than the long setup we had to do. In occurrences equal to zero, return occurrences. Um, if current dot item dot equals um, our item, then occurrences plus plus. That's it. That's really it. We just simply go through, through check the the item has it, and then go on to the next node. This one is fairly straightforward. It also takes O of n time because again, we're just keep going until we hit a uh, null. We don't need the tail here at all um, because we want to, and, we, and I, even if we did, we wouldn't want to put it in our condition statement because we don't want to accent, because we don't want to stop before the tail, right? And this isn't going to give us a null pointer exception because we're going to, current will hit, will be eventually become null because it's going to follow the tail. Tail.x is equal to null. We're going to go to the null. Then Chikard is going to say, huh, I'm at a null. OK, I'm done. That's perfectly fine. If you hit null, null pointer exceptions happen when you hit a null, and then you try to do something with it. It's perfectly valid to store null in a, in a variable. Just don't do anything with it. OK. I, I suppose it's like working with dynamite in, in, in a way, or something that's, that could explode. Um, this one I like because if you didn't pick up on it, which is perfectly fine if you didn't, um, this is the 
one of the steps for um, this is one of the steps for um, sorry for merge sort. So and actually, it becomes very useful when we have two. Uh, we're gonna yeah to be two sorted linked lists of integers and merges them into linked lists. I think I put list here and list here rather than linked list so that it would all fit onto one line, which would be which on an electric exam, I do try to say exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and do the imports. We can do the um, imports here. I could do the imports here. I could put them in practice exam so that it stays outside of a linked list. Let's go ahead and put these outside of a linked list just to avoid confusion. And it doesn't matter, honestly. Let's just go ahead and import. I'm going to say what I mean here, linked list import and linked list. That was weird. Okay. What did I do there? How weird. Okay. So now we've got this. Let's go ahead and close that so that we can actually see it all. Okay. So right now, so what we want to do is we want to take these two linked lists and merge them into one linked list. Um, and the thing here is that these linked lists are sorted, right? Okay, it says that these two, it says in the question that these two linked lists are sorted and we want to merge them into one sorted linked list, right? Um, I'll put return output here. So in other words, yay drawing, love being able to do that, um, super useful. They really should be able to make it so you can make comments that are pictures and stuff like that would be great. Um, so basically if I have one list over here, that's one, four, five, six, and I've got two, three, um, two, three, and seven, and eight, then what I should be able to do is that these two are gonna to merge together into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sense? So these will merge together. So, and we're given the assumption that these two things are sorted. I don't have to check if they're sorted or not, okay? I'm just given that as, as a freebie, okay? So how does this work? Well, the way it works is that um what we do is that we compare well since these are linked lists and we want to try to get we want we can take advantage of the fact that hey checking the first item and removing the first item and adding to the end are all constant time operations so let's try and kind of like think about that because if we're dealing with linked lists i'll probably give you problems that play to their strengths so what i can do here is that i check the first the first item of each list okay and I say, which is smaller, one or two? And uh, my five-year-old son would be able to tell me the answer. One is smaller. So, um, and so we, and what we do is we just simply remove that. And then we repeat, okay? So which is smaller, two or four? Two is. Which is smaller, three or uh, four or three? Which is smaller, four or seven? Which is smaller, five or seven? Which is smaller, six or seven? Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we don't have anything left in here. So this works until we until one is empty. Okay. However, what we can just simply do is we could just simply tack all these guys on right over there, right? Seven and eight. Okay. So so it's two steps essentially, which is check, keep comparing the first things, and then uh, add all the remainders to the end. Anything that's remaining by definition is bigger than everything else in the list and is already sorted. So we don't have to really wor worry too hard about it. So, um, so let's see, that makes sense to everybody. So while uh, list a dot get zero, sorry, well, no, 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 not get, get zero. We do that in a bit. Uh, list a dot get, well, list a dot size is greater than zero, and list b dot size is greater than zero. While well, these things are bigger than zero,
Okay. What do we want to do? We want to, while these two sizes are bigger than zero, what we need to do is we need to check on these. If list A is less than, or we could use compare to as well, but I'm not going to use compare to right here. I'm just going to use, since it's integers, I'm just going to use integers. So if list A is less than list B, um, or sorry, list A dot get index zero is less than list B dot get index zero. This is what happens when you type and talk at the same time. Uh, then output dot add list A dot remove the zeroth item, right? So remove the last thing from the, from the first thing from the list and add it to the end of our output. Okay. Otherwise, if B is greater than A, well, actually, it's not quite what I wrote, but it's close enough. Well, list is better. If B is greater than A. Uh, remove, uh, remove that item and add it to the end. So what is the only kind of case where I haven't, what, what is the case that I haven't explicitly covered? Because I've implicitly covered it, but not explicitly, yes. Right, and like I said, that was an, I haven't explicitly covered it, I've implicitly covered it, right? If they're equal, what would happen? Well, if it's less than do this, if it's anything but less than, eh, remove it from the B side. So. If it's equal to, I'll take the B side. If I wanted to be explicit about which side, I would just add an e less than or equal to, you know? Um, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just when you're dealing with kind of deal keeping things sorted, you wanna know if you've got duplicates, we wanna keep that in mind somehow. Like what should I do about duplicates or the like? Um, but this works. And so this will continue until, and because we're removing, the size will be adjusted and eventually the size will e equal zero, right? This size gets the current size. It won't get, it won't always be the same number. It, it check, it updates every time we check it in the wild. Okay, so now that we're at zero, right? You might think, okay, now I have to have some if statements. If this is right, if, if A is the one that's empty, do this. If B is the one that's empty, do this. But one of them's empty. So if I add everything from that, that doesn't change anything. And fortunately, lists actually have a very awesome built-in uh, class called, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just simply say, hey, uh, output dot add all. Yeah, that exists, it's awesome. Add all, list A, and then output dot add, all list B. Yeah, yeah, they're just doing terrible today. And what's cool about this is that, okay, if A is the one is empty, then this does nothing, right? It just adds nothing. And then, and then it will add everything from list B in order, right? And then it essentially connects the two linked lists or linked lists which is pretty cool. Um, and then if list A is the one that's not empty, then we add everything from list A, then list B is essentially just a waste of time, but it's no more of a waste of time than having an if statement, right? So it's no worries. And so then we return our output. Add all is pretty cool. It's built into pretty much every collection we'll be dealing with in Java. Um, in fact, every, if, um, let's, so it's very useful. I and just keep it in mind. But again, we're doing nothing here that a for loop can't handle. Uh, but you know, as a professor, it's my prerogative to give you the more, or sorry, it's my, it's my, uh, I love being able to give you the more refined answers. And this answer as written gives us a linear time algorithm. It takes O of N because we, so first, sorry. So the technically, Okay, here, 
then this is the very technically, technically, we would say that this algorithm is O N M time. Okay. Now why N M? First off, that's a terrible name. I hate doing N M, right? Because N and M, they sound it sounds like I just had a candy. Okay, especially with this thing on. Okay, same with P and Q. Oh my God, do I hate P and Q because they look the same, just reversed. Like, you know, I, I'll, I'll use A and B. We're A. In fact, I'll do like this, just to be explicit. It's O of size of A times size of B. That is the technical thing. Uh, but if we assume that list A and list B are the same size. Then it's then it's two n, which is n. Okay, let me break that down for you. Right, what we've got here. Sorry, it wasn't n m. It was sorry, I was wrong there. It's n it's o of n plus m. Not they're not multiplied together. If they were multiplied together, would be squared. I was just again talking and doing the actual thing can be dangerous. So let me go through this. Each of these are all constant time operations. Checking the size, constant time operation get That's a constant time operation because we're getting the first thing adding and removing these are all constant time operations these operations are technically every item that's left right we're adding on every item that's left although if we're being really 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 clever with the way that the, if the programmers and these were linked with linked lists made these really clever then these are actually constant time operations because I've got one linked list here. I've got another linked list here. All right, fail, fail. If I want to add everything, uh, no, because I'm not removing everything. So I would have to technically, you know, yeah. So never mind. If if we were just simply, if it wasn't copying everything over, I could just simply do this. But since we have to copy them over into the new list, right? then it does make a huge difference. So anyway, this touches every item with the add method once, which as we've seen here, each add and remove is a constant time operation. So every item in list A gets, uh, gets manipulated once. Every item in list B gets manipulated once. Uh, so if they're the same size, if they're both N, then it's N plus N. We have two N, right? If they're the same size. But if they're not the same size, list A is size A, and list B is size B, if they're vastly different sizes, right? Like one has a hundred items and one has a hundred thousand items. If they're vastly different sizes, then it's A plus B. I haven't brought this up before because you didn't need to know it and, it's, and it wasn't really relevant. Still not really relevant. I'd be happy with you calling it O of N because most of the time these are the same size. But it's worthwhile to know that this is the technically correct answer that's O of A plus B or O of N plus M. But again, just like adding that much in all at once is kind of like, is kind of an overload. All right, now this one is one that we could actually spend the rest of the lecture on, believe it or not. Um, because this one is a classic interview question. Uh, specific, now, why is this one an interview question? It's because that with an interview question, they can keep making this harder after you get a solution. So here, the answer is, what if it's a doubly linked, reverse a doubly linked list? And then the, afterwards they can say, well, what if you don't have access to another data structure? Or they'll say, what if you, it's a singly linked list? Or what if it's a singly linked list and you don't have access to another dangerous, uh, another data structure? You can actually reverse it with, with, with uh, in place without having an extra data structure. It's just a pain to do so. And it's, you got to kind of know the trick before you, you, before you can do it. Um, but they like this one because it allows you, they, it allows you to say, it allows them to see you kind of squirm in the right kind of way. You get an answer and then you keep refining the answer. So this one, uh, that, so the way I've said this, this implies that this has an easy solution. Um, which I'll show you now. So what is the method? So write a method that reverses a linked list that reverses a doubly linked list. This method will be an instance method for linked list. So you can use the node head and tail references to refer to a linked list. Okay, so 
right? We have access to the node class. So the cheaty way or the easy way, the way that of least pain is to always use a separate data structure to, to, do, to do whatever you want. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, what I mean by that is that if I've got a linked list that I want to reverse stuff into, then just simply add it into a new linked list and then output it. So this is the easy way for me to do it, which is um, linked list E temp. Now I don't have the add and remove method in here, which is fine. Um, I'll just simply do, I'll just simply, um, I guess I'll have to, so I might have to temporarily add them. So this is why I say it's very useful to come prepared with like, you know, some framework, like, but whatever. So let's, if I don't, I'll just make basically public stat, because we don't actually need to test the code here if I know that it works. So public Boolean add item. I'll just make the head for it, return true. So it's not actually going to do anything. And public uh, int remove int index. Return return an int, it returns an E. So in this case, return null. Okay, so as you can see, I've just put placeholders there. Okay, don't actually run the code with placeholders, right? Because, but now I can actually do what I need to do. So temporary, so I've got this temp link list over here or, or whatever this class is, it doesn't really matter, just using an auxiliary data structure. And what I would do in this case is I would say, hey, um, while this dot size, because I'm inside this class, is greater than zero, uh, temp dot temp dot add is equal to temp dot add this dot remove zero. Right. I could use pointers, but again, why? Because this is the easy way. So add everything to this. What's going on over here? Temp may not have been initialized. You are entirely correct. Okay. So all I've done is I have successfully added everything to the linked list. But now, the, but that linked list is in the same order. But now my linked list is empty. So I've basically moved all of my items over. But now I can go through this other linked list in reverse and add my items to this linked list. Uh, to do so, I have to make the other one, which is a public Boolean uh, add int index e item. It doesn't take Boolean, it takes void. And what I want to do in this case is I'll say this dot well this dot size temp dot size is greater than zero because I didn't I have to use a I didn't use a method here because I didn't make one. Temp dot remove index zero. This dot add zero. So now I, what I'm doing is I'm removing the first item and I'm adding it to the beginning. And I keep adding each. So I add what was index zero to index zero. Now what's index one gets added to index zero. So what was that index zero gets pushed to index one. So we keep pushing it over. Do it. Again, this is very similar to the um, what I did for the remove for the reversing the strings method, where basically 
what I'm doing is, is that if I've started with one, two, three, four, what I'm doing is I'm adding one, then I'm adding two, then I'm adding three in front of it, and then I'm adding four in front of it. So that's how you do it with this. But again, the restriction that typically gets asked next is, well, what if you don't have an auxiliary data structure? Then you do that, you sigh immensely and wondering where, why in the world they want you to know this. And this is because you, they want to see, can you ma manipulate memory locations? And the idea here now is basically you have to iterate through and mess with those memory pointers. I'll come back to this one if we have time because I want to make sure, because this one I think is the most valuable one for knowing for the exam, which is this add method, which is a sorted linked list, which is about a new type of linked list called a sorted linked list. Now, this is about, so this was about sorted linked lists on the practice exam. This other question was about sorted linked lists on the practice exams. In the business, we call this a hint. So anyway, Suppose we have a new type of linked list called a sorted linked list, which is a linked list, but it automatically keeps everything sorted. As a result, when we add an item to the sorted linked list, we don't just provide an index uh, because it automatically knows what that index is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, to go ahead and make a new class and kind of copy and paste from the other one because I've already made the add, um, add method that that does this stuff. So sorted linked list. Go ahead and make the class. I'm gonna copy the node over. I'm gonna copy this stuff over rather, and it will try to import it. Right? See, like that. Imported it from the other thing. I don't want that. Um, now for the sorted linked list, though, we have the decision to make, which is do we want to deal with E's or do we want to deal with integers? And I'm going to deal with E's here just because I can. Um, but since everything has to be sorted, in order for me to deal with E's, I have to make it comparable, right? That's why I gave you the option of working with integers. E extends comparable. All right, man, I am so bringing my keyboard next time. It makes it much easier than working on the laptop keyboard. Okay. So what does the add method do? You could use either singly or doubly linked lists. I will be using singly, thank you very much, because that means less mess to deal with. Uh, you can use less than, greater than, or equal to the command items, but if you remember to use, yep, you cannot use get node, you cannot call the int index in e because that no longer makes sense, right? If we're adding to a specific index, that could violate and destroy our list. The, the idea here is that we just simply, if we add an item four, it goes from one, two, five to one, two, four, five, right? And the solution must run in O of n time. Now, in, in these kind of problems where I'll give you, I will have a a cost for not adhering to this. It won't just be wrong. You'll have a point penalty, right? So if you can't figure out how to do it in a certain runtime, I'll have, it, it won't be the end of the world. And in fact, you should put something down rather than just like not putting anything down. If you, if you leave it blank, congrats, you've just forfeited all the points. The public void add e item. All right, um, so we have a couple. So let's go ahead and think about what our cases are for this and let's draw them out. Okay. So now one of our, one of the, so first off, let's think about the very first case that we always have in a linked list, right? The first case that I've always considered in a linked list was add our indexes out of bounds. That doesn't apply here because we don't have indices, right? So awesome. So let's go ahead and think about our cases. Um, so, right, because it's always useful to refer to these five cases that we do have, even if we're not dealing with indices, right? 
our first case is what if it's an empty, a completely empty list? Then head and tail are going to be no, null. So any comparisons I do to them are moot, right? So, so always consider those first things. Even though there's not an index involved, just simply going through the motion and saying, hey, do we have to care about indices is useful. So no, I don't. What about if it's a completely empty list, right? I'm adding to a completely empty list. I should initialize head and tail, right? Okay, so um, so let me write down that. So I'm going to write down that as a condition, okay? Which is if size equal equals zero. Okay, even though I'm not dealing with indices though, I do have to have a kind of concern, which is, right, normally, um, and we have the other cases, which is adding to index zero and adding to index size as separate cases, because when we do that, we're changing what the head and tail of the list are, right? We're not able to do that the same way here, but those are still the cases we need to consider, which is what, what those last three cases are still that. So, so those three cases are still valid. The normal case would be used in linked list. What if we're adding a new head? What if we're adding a new tail? And what if it's anything else? Okay. So let's go ahead and think about um, our case of adding a new head. How would we know if we're adding a new head in this case? Not by the index, right? It's a sorted linked list. So how would I know? Not a trick question, by the way. How would you know that item that's a new item I'm adding should be the new head? Yes. Yeah, if it's the smallest item. And I can check that by saying, hey, if this item is smaller than head, or even easier, smaller than or equal to the head, right? Similarly, how do I know it should be the new tail? Compare it to the tail. If it's bigger than the tail or equal to the tail, let's move it, let's slap it onto the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll say here, if if item dot compare to head dot item is and I guess I need to do actually hold on is less than or equal to zero. Let's see if it compiles. Yep, it does. Okay. So if item dot compare to Item.head. Let me see. Oh, because I didn't. It's giving me warnings because I want to say it's comparable to other E's. There we go. So if item.compare to head.item is less than or equal to zero, that means that's the smallest item and this is adding to the head now, right? Um, else if item.compare to, and again, you could use greater than or less than if you were using integers. I'm not using integers here. I'm using it for anything we're sorting. So um, tail.item greater than or equal to, if it's greater than or equal to, so zero, so remember, if you get a comparison that gives you, an, if your compare to gives you a negative number, that means that item is less than head.item or comes before head.item. If it gives you a zero, it means they have the exact same value. And if you get a positive number, so when you do item dot compare to another item, that means the first item, the item that you're calling compare to item comes after or is greater than. So that's why I'm doing this over here. So else if, and that's the tail. And then else is everything else. So these can be, so first, so, so now we've got our four cases for this problem. You don't have to do it this way, but this is certainly the way that makes sure that the head and the tail maintain their correctness um, and we can explicitly kind of categorize it. So size is equal to zero. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to pack this guy into a into a node. Node E adding is equal to a new node with the item in it, right? And also so I don't forget, right? Since we're adding an item, just for correctness sake, I need to make sure that I increment the size, right? At the end. What if you forget it? 
well, if I notice it, it will be, if you forget it and I notice it, it's going to be a point off. It's not going to be make it completely wrong. Like if you, what about if you forgot to do this? It's a 15 point problem. I might take uh, three points off or forget uh, two or three points off, depending on, on how important I consider that in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, um, but if you handle it somewhere else, that's perfectly fine. So, but the main reason we have this is so that because head and tail are null. So, if I didn't have this, so if I didn't have this here, we'd get a null pointer exception. So if head is, so in this case, adding, sorry, head is equal to adding, tail is equal to adding, and that's it. It's just that new node becomes the first item and the last item by the virtue of being the only item. All right, what if it's smaller? That's also that's a constant time oper operation. We have a new head that we need to add. So uh, adding dot next is equal to head. Right? What does that do? We take right. Always like to draw it out. We created a new node here, and we've just attached it. Right? This was adding. And this was head. And no, super easy to read there. Um, but the point is that we've attached it to that new node. And now since it's attached, we need to make this new node that we've added like that. Make sense? Adding.next is equal to head, head is equal to adding. Uh, here, super easy to do as well. With this other one, what we're going to do is we're going to say tail.next is equal to head. Tail.next is equal to adding. And then tail is equal to adding. Right? Always easier to deal with singly linked lists than doubly linked lists in terms of the brevity of it. If we want to deal with double with, with it, I I would at this if we wanted to make it a doubly linked list, I'd do something like head dot prev at this point is equal to is equal to adding, but that's essentially it. Don't really need to do too much there. Okay. Okay. Okay, and 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 now we get here, and obviously that leaves a gaping hole, like saying, okay, gosh, what do I do now? Right. So the bulk of the points for this problem, at least half of them would be in this one. Because now we have to actually think. Um, and okay, so, so let's actually stop using boxes and start using numbers, right? One, five, uh, seven, eight. Okay. So suppose I want to add the number six, okay? What should I do? Well, what I should do is basically, okay, I'll start here. So, so, so basically I need to compare my number and basically say, hey, do I fit between the two of you? Now, what's useful is that I've kind of already knocked out the edge cases unintentional, which is, where there's no, where I don't have to fit something in between something, right? So because if it's less than the head or greater than the tail, it's it's on the end. We've added it to the end. It doesn't fit between something. This else case means I fit between something. So that means I'm looking for the thing where I fit between it. Um, but here's the kicker, which is going to make the comparison easy. I just have to check. Basically, I'll say, I'll start with like current. So I'm going to do the whole iterating using current. And I'm going to say, hey, does th is this item less than current.next? Because I've already compared to current. If it's head, if I, if I, if, because I'm going to start at head and it, and then let me ask, is six less than five? No, it's not. So we go ahead and we make this guy current. And I've already compared to five. I already know I'm bigger than him. So I don't have to ask that question again. I could, but just be you know more typing. 
So now I ask, is six less than seven? Yes, it is. So connect to seven, take five pointers, connect to me, which is current point. So essentially what I just need to do is I have to go through, um, iterate and basically ask where I fit between. So let's see how that works. Node E current is equal to head while let's just go with true for right now because I have no idea what I'm doing, right? Or actually even better because I'm gonna go with uh, done, Boolean done is equal to false is the way I like to do while loops when I have no idea what I'm doing. And, I, and this is me saying, I'll figure it out later. Uh, while not done. It even makes grammatical sense. I love it. Right? While not done, what am I going to do? And this is essentially just a just a fancier way of saying uh, while true break. You know, is that it's just a fancier way of doing it that avoids me from voice that makes people not look down at me for using break. But whatever. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say okay. Uh, we need to say current is equal to head. So there. Um, and I need to remember to iterate. So, and I don't want to forget that current is equal to current dot next. And uh, I know that this is never going to go out of bounds by virtue of that. The only way I could go out of bounds is if I'm bit, if I'm smaller than the if I'm greater than or equal to the the last item. That's the only way I could go out of bounds. But I've already checked that, so I can't go out of bounds. So, okay, and then I'm going to ask if item uh, dot compare to uh, current, not current dot item, but current dot next dot item, because I already know where I am, because I've already compared head. So I already and so current dot next dot item. If that is less than or equal to zero, so if I'm less than or equal to the item, right? So that's what I got to do here. If I'm less than or equal to, and by the way, I don't have this memorized. I just do this once every semester. So this is this is me remembering a lot of what I did like five, you know, three months ago. So no, I'm not like reciting this completely from memory. Um. If item dot compare to is equal to current dot next item, right? So in that case, then I want to attach it. So I say adding. That means that so if this is true, that means I fit between current and current dot next. So I'll do adding is equal to is adding dot next. Ah, adding dot next is equal to current dot next, right? Again, what I'm doing here is with that line is that I've got adding, this is current, this is adding. What I've done here with this line is I'm saying adding dot next is equal to current dot next. So I'm attaching it like that. I'm storing current.next, I'm storing this memory location in essentially what's inside this arrow, this dot next. Now what I have to do is I now have to make it an actual chain by saying current.next is equal to adding, which makes that arrow and actually makes it like this. Current dot next is equal to adding like that. Okay. And uh, there, All right? Done is equal to true. I'm done there. Okay, because I've added it between.
Mm-hmm. Okay. So it is 1210, sorry, 12.07. I still have one more question to go, go on. But I just said that sorted linked list, right? I've had two sorted linked list questions that were fairly difficult on here, or what I would say were fairly intensive. And I said that was a hint. So that means what kind of question should you practice on? Right. And so brainstorm about the kind of questions that I might ask. The ability to predict is also also impacts you know is also a good indicator of your understanding. So let's go with this one. A list can be implemented in a number of ways. Compare and contrast an array list with a linked list. And which way would you want to use a list over another? This question and some variation will be on the exam. So have a question ready for it. So the first way I I like to compare these guys is through memory usage. Okay, memory usage. Um, specifically how these guys use extra memory in general. Um, and the answer is array lists and linked lists, be, you know, they use memory in different ways. Uh, linked lists are just scavenger hunts, you know, through your computer of random places of memory. Okay. Um, but they're made up of the node class. So each item, so each of these nodes, right, it does have a bit of overhead. It specifically has E item and then E, you know, so, and then, sorry, node next and also previous. Okay. That's how it works in the linked list. You've got your next, your previous, and your item. Now, first off, this doesn't actually store the item, right? That's just the memory location of the item. That's storing the memory location of the item which is about four bytes, I believe. We're working in a 64-bit system, which I don't think Java deals with. Then it would be uh, eight bytes, I believe. Okay. Node next, but anyway, yeah, no, four bytes, it would be five bytes because 64-bit, five bytes. And node.next, we have the same kind of thing. It's going to take like four bytes of memory. So each of these have a, has an overhead of just a couple of a few bytes for each of these. So every item you store in a linked list has overhead. Now, array lists also have overhead. It's E item, right? E item. It stores the memory location of that thing, right? but you don't have to store the previous and next. So less overhead for this or that. However, array lists do have kind of a issue, which is that, the, is that you, allocate mem you allocate memory before you actually need it, right? With array lists, you can allocate memory before you actually need it, right? The initial capacity of an array list is 10. If you're just storing two items, that's eight wasted spots. Similarly, when we reallocate, we double the capacity or we increase it by 50%, depending on which, uh, um, which programming language and which philosophy you're using, right? But the point is, is that we, we base, I like to use doubling though, because at least pedagogically, because that makes it's easier to envision, less math involved than adding an additional, than multiplying by 1.5, right? So for example, if I have a capacity of 1 million, right, and I'm adding my 1 million in first item, right, then I have to reallocate and now I've got a capacity of 2 million and I'm using a million one spaces. But if I don't use any of those extra spaces I just made, I'm wasting 999,999 spaces, right? So, so the disadvantage is that this basically has a higher overhead cost. This can waste memory. You can just utterly just not use memory, right? Array lists can just not. Now with array lists, though, if you really want to get into the down, uh, into the the details about it, the nitty gritty, uh, there's two ways to get around this. First off, 
uh, the array list constructor can take in an int as a uh, as a parameter, which will set the capacity, right? So here, give me a second. Ah, I don't want that. I want mouse. Okay. Array list. Java. Yeah, Java H should be fine. Um, yeah, each instant has a capacity. So, constructs an initial array list with the specified initial capacity. So if you know exactly how many you're gonna hit or what your maximum is, you can, you can do that there. The other alternative is the opposite of what we've been doing, which is uh, trim to size, which shrinks the, which is like reallocate, but in reverse. It removes capacity, makes the current capacity of the array list equal to the current size, which frees up all that extra memory that was wasted. So you're able to do that. You're able to make sure. So, so it's not, it's not, you know, it's not yes or no, you know, use one or the other if you care about memory. It's be mindful. And if you really, really, really care about memory, you got to use arrays. Just straight up use arrays if you really want to use memory, care about memory. And if you really care about memory, you should be doing this in C. Why are you doing it in Java, right? If you care about memory, go buy more. Go buy more, right? Um, add and remove, okay? Let's start with linked lists, right? For a linked list, right, for a linked list, it's like this. We want to add to the end, it's a constant time operation because all I have to do is draw an, is just draw an arrow and move some labels, right? Doesn't matter how big it is to add to the head, add to the beginning. I just draw an arrow and change the label. Same with with the tail. I just draw an arrow and change some labels around, right? So adding and the adding to the head or tail is constant time. But if I'm adding to the middle, right, that's technically an O of N operation because even though I still in moving pointers around, right? I have to go, I have to go and iterate through it, right? The big O cheat sheet will tell you oh, it's constant time, but it's constant time plus the amount of time it takes to search for it, right? I'd have to go into, I'd have to go and find the appropriate index because I don't know where that is. I don't have a pointer to it. I'd have to start from the beginning, go all the way to that point and then find it. And then insert it that way. Um, on the other hand, right, with array lists, right, so, right, if I need to add something to the beginning, like over here, I'd have to shift everything over. Same with adding to the middle. I'd have to shift everything uh, that was the, that everything that, that I was displacing over to the right, which takes O of N time. The only exception is if I have to add to the end, right, where I don't have to shift anything over. But if I'm out of capacity, I can't just simply do that. If I'm out of capacity, then it takes, then it takes O of N time again, right? because I would have to reallocate. So for, for this one, so for this one, it is, right, constant time, sorry, it's O of N, except at the end, except when you have to reallocate, right? I'm not giving, I'm not writing this out for you because, you know, just make it too easy. Okay. Now get and set are fair. Now for get and set, those are fairly straightforward. No real exceptions there. To, to get an item at a, in an array list, in an array list, constant time always, right? Just because it's you're using the underlying array, right? And you can just kind of teleport to a memory location by using the equation. On the other hand, with a linked list, you have to iterate to that location, which takes all of n time. Very straight. 
it's a fairly straightforward process to iterate there. Um, that is about it. So give me a second to stop 